Ladies and gentlemen, hello. Uh, my name is Dr. Casey Olson. I'm with the Department of Animal Sciences and Industry at Kansas State University, where I hold the Lewis Professorship in Range Beef Cattle Nutrition and Management. And I'd like to talk to you today about the relationship between trace mineral status and bull fertility, particularly where young beef sires are concerned. There's quite a bit of information that indicates that adequate trace mineral intake immediately prior to and during uh, the breeding season is critical for reproductive performance in males. We know that uh, when we can make small improvements in fertility, both on the female and the male side of the equation, that uh, we can sometimes reap significant economic benefits. And in that regard, I'd like to talk to you about a study that my colleagues and I ran here uh, several years ago. We were curious to see if a strategic elevation of trace mineral status at critical times in that young sire's life uh, would influence that bull's eventual value at sale time. Now you're probably aware of the fact that this cycle of spermatogenesis in beef and dairy bulls is about 61 days. And we hypothesized that if we could uh, raise trace mineral status prior to a breeding soundness examination or prior to a breeding season that we might make some improvements in bull fertility. And here's what we did. We worked with Think Beef Genetics and they were able to put together about 500 sires from 13 different locations, uh, commingle them in a single place and uh, give us the chance to evaluate a product that you know is Multimin 90 uh, in the context of bull fertility. Uh, we were able to, to first um, get in contact with those bulls at weaning age, about seven months. And at that time, we administered a, a, either a multimin or a saline injection at a rate of uh, one milliliter per 45 kilograms body weight. Uh, we waited until the bulls were about 10 months of age then. Uh, while they were on a fairly aggressive growing diet, uh, gaining about one and a half kilograms per day, they had a oral trace mineral package that met or exceeded all National Research Council recommendations for um, the requirement of those breeding bulls. So at 10 months of age, which is earlier than typical, we brought these young sires in. We gave them a full breeding soundness examination, um, noticed in that first breeding soundness examination, which uh, about 50% of the bulls of both treatments uh, passed. Uh, we noticed that the multiman treated cattle had greater sperm cell motility than the non-treated cattle or the placebo treated cattle. At the time of that second breeding soundness examination, we reapplied our treatments. So the, the bulls assigned to the multiman treatment this time got an injection at a rate of one mil per 60 kilo, 68 kilograms of body weight, whereas the non-treated cattle received an equal volume of physiological saline. Okay, two months later, immediately prior to the time these bulls were, were sold, we did another breeding soundness examination. Uh, we again saw um, improved sperm cell motility in the multiman treated bulls, but we noticed something else between the first breeding soundness examination and the second breeding soundness examination. The, the bulls that were assigned to the multiman treatment actually increased their sperm uh, morphological scores relative to the non-treated cattle. And, and subsequently, there were, there were a greater number of bulls in that multiman treatment that were sale eligible than the saline treated cattle. When we did a cost accounting at the end of the study, uh, we learned some pretty interesting things. Now, we, we charged ourselves for the Multiman product at, to the tune of about 40 cents per mil. Uh, we charged ourselves $3 per animal when we put them through the chute. And, and the total treatment cost per bull was just under about $12. Well, obviously, we treated you know, half of the nearly 500 bulls on our study with, with Multiman 90, so we, we incurred quite a cost there. However, at uh, sale time, because of the fact that we had uh, a greater number of sale eligible bulls uh, that were in the Multiman 90 treatment group, uh, we were able to net about $72 in increased revenue um, in those Multiman treated cattle for all bulls that were enrolled in the study. Folks, that's, that's some significant money. Uh, we all know that non-breeding bulls have relatively low value compared with, with breeding bulls and that uh, if we use product like Multiman to elevate trace mineral status in a way uh, that precedes a planned breeding soundness examination or a planned uh, sale date, uh, we can expect to see some pretty uh, significant uh, changes in sperm quality and possibly greater numbers of bulls will be sale qualified uh, having been treated with supplemental trace minerals.
I'm Galen Fink, Fink Beef Genetics at Randolph, Kansas. Uh, we run a large uh, purebred operation of Angus and Charlotte cattle. Uh, we sell around 700 bulls a year each year and do a lot of embryo transplant work uh, with limited facilities and have done this for many years. Uh, we're uh, generally listed in the top 15 largest seed stock operations in America and uh, take pride that we do it without much machinery or much uh, extra labor. We started uh, with uh, multi men on our yearling bulls uh, about three years ago. Last year we were involved in a project with Kansas State University which included about 500 of our fall born bulls. We gave them multi men at weaning time in April when they were weaned at six, seven months of age. Same bulls received multi men again in July and then we semen checked the bulls in September when they're about average of 12 months of age. Uh, we found that we uh, were able to increase the amount of bulls that semen checked at a year of age by approximately 3% overall. Uh, we do uh, expect our bulls to pass the semen check by the time they're 12 to 13 months of age. Uh, so we check our bulls from very young compared to, to a lot of producers. And uh, so this test gave me a, a good idea of, again, uh, the bulls that the, the past that the multi men did give us an extra bump. Part of the study with Kansas State University was to draw uh, blood on all the bulls at weaning time. And uh, I found this very interesting as we found out there were differences between cooperator herds and all those are within 50 or 75 miles, but we actually seen differences in the bull calves and the amounts of selenium and different things uh, within the blood work. So to me, that was very beneficial from the project. Uh, Multiman being the product that it is, uh, it's my understanding that it is uh, a solution that does break down over time. It doesn't go to work just, to, just when you inject it, but it does break down over time and help maybe level out some of the differences that, in some of these different animals uh, when they do come in from different places. So, uh, we've been using multi-men for about two years uh, in our yearling heifers also now uh, going into breeding and also our donor cows. We generally have, oh, anywhere between 70 and 100 donors uh, at one time split up in different groups. And this year we started making sure all the donors got multi-men also. We are on track to get our females, our donor cows and yearling heifers probably on a, a standard and if you would like to use a, a more of an equalizing base, kind of like the bulls also, just to kind of get everything on the same page, same time for breeding and flushing results. And we intend to keep using multi-men on our bulls as we've seen significant benefits from it from last year's trial with Kansas State University.